As a high school social studies teacher, I find it difficult to verify how carefully students read assigned online articles, and sometimes I wonder how much some students actually comprehend when they read online articles I assign. It seems foolish to require written notes and worksheets from students in today's world of digital communication. I've found that the social bookmarking application Digo provides a solution to this problem through bookmarking, highlighting, and commenting options while reading online articles. In order to use Digo, students must create a Digo account and they must install the Digo toolbar located in the tools at the bottom of the page. If I go to My Digo, I'll come to My Bookmark page. These are my bookmarks, and over to the right are my tags, which I can change to alphabetical and list. I teach AP US History, so most of my tags are related to Advanced Placement US History. After creating an account, the student creates a group and invites the teacher to join the group. This is done in the My Groups window. If students are working on a group project, one student invites all the other group members to his group. Use the Create Group button. Now it's advisable to be consistent when having students create groups. I have my students designate their group by their period number and first initial last name. The group also needs um, a name so it appears online and we will call this the J Smith group. You can include interests. Um, one important thing here is the privacy mode. Since this is in school, I would highly recommend setting the membership to private. And that way, the only way someone can join the group is by invitation only. And here, students can invite other people to join their group. In this case, it would be me, the teacher, or it could be other students who are doing the group work with them. I'm going to go back to my groups to show you how you can use these groups in student research. I'm going to select uh, period one Harvey group to which I was invited. Here are the articles which this student used in his research and I'll select the article on guerrilla warfare. And you can see that in this article uh, highlighting appears. If the highlighting appears in yellow uh, a little Digo pop-up menu appears. However, if I scroll over a highlighting area in pink, um, a little comment box appears, which the student has used to post a comment on that particular piece of information. Highlighting is very easy. Uh, you simply highlight the text that you would like to use. It appears blue. There is a highlight button at, on the Digo toolbar that turns it to yellow and now if I scroll over the yellow highlighting the pop-up menu appears and I can now add a sticky note and in the sticky note window I can post a comment. And after I post the comment, I can choose to share that with 
the group. And I can share this back to period one Harvey group. I can tag it if I wish. And I can select OK. And now, here is my comment on this piece of this particular article. So the power of this is, I can see what it is this student not only has read, but how carefully he has read it and how he plans to use it in his essay or research. For instance, if I scroll over here, I can see that he says some of these apply to Iraq, some don't. And I might think that that might not be the world's best comment and that perhaps uh, this is a little vague. So I can add a comment to his comment. I can say, this is vague. Be specific. <clears throat> this is shared with him only. And I click OK. And now when I scroll over his comment, where he says some of these apply to Iraq, some don't, I can say this is vague, be specific. So this is basically how Digo works. The nice thing is once you highlight a single passage or a single word or a number in an article and highlight it, the article is automatically bookmarked to your Digo account. You do not need to go to a, another screen or menu in order to do that. It is now included in my bookmarks because I bookmarked this particular passage in this article. So I can check the student's comments by going to each article that he bookmarked and checking the individual notes that are over each particular highlight, although there is an easier way to do that. If I go back to um, my bookmarks, and I go back to my groups. And here in the group view with period one Harvey, I have all of the articles that he used in his research. But I can also view all of his comments here as well. Over to the right is number six. And if I click on expand, I can see in green, these are the passages that he highlighted. And in yellow, these are the comments that he made on each highlighted passage. So I can scroll down and I can just see exactly what it is that he said. In Newsweek, the article said, and he has comment there. And if I continue down here, I can see here's the passage where he s said some of these apply to Iraq and some don't. Here's my comment. This is vague. Be specific. He can then add an additional comment to that. So it's very easy to monitor without going back to the actual article. Uh, it's easy to monitor the student's research. And I can do this with any particular article. If I select any of these, I can either check his highlighting by going back to the actual article and look at the highlighting or if I go back to the groups page and check this group I can expand or collapse any of the articles comments with the uh, button over to over to the right There are a, a couple of other things that I've learned about uh, Digo. Once you make an assignment and you do have groups to which you've been invited by students, uh, you may end up with a lot of groups to which you really no longer want to uh, belong. 
If you open the group window, there is a little button here that says quit group, and you, I could withdraw from period one Harvey group at any time. You can quit any group to which you have been invited. You cannot eliminate groups which you have created without contacting Digo. They will eliminate the group. You cannot delete a group. So I think Digo is a very powerful tool with many possibilities for research and collaboration. It's not only a social bookmarking tool, but it is a great way to monitor student research by using groups, highlighting, and sticky notes, and by reading and posting comments on the student's research. Digo also requires students to actually read the article in order to comment on it. In my book, this is a good thing. Thank you very much.